Good day. This is a short talk on social media and the elections, the need for fact-checking. I am Professor Rachel Kahn of the UP Journalism Department at the College of Mass Communication. In the ideal world, social media has expanded the public sphere and leveled the playing field by allowing incumbents and newcomers alike to speak directly to their voters. In reality, however, he who has more funds at his disposal can manipulate the virtual world and make his presence greater than his opponents. And that's just by doing things honestly. If they really wanted to, in, in a less um, honest manner, it could be manipulated further to make you see only his or her ads. Moreover, there is an increasing danger of disinformation on social media. This short lecture aims to help the internet users to navigate the internet and social media wisely during the election period. This short talk tackles how social media manipulates your information sources, social media polls, and the information disorder. Of the total Philippine population, 67% are estimated to be internet users. A greater number, or 80.7%, are believed to be active on social media. This amounts to 89 million Filipinos, very active on social media through their mobile connections. Top websites are google.com, Facebook, and YouTube. Social media algorithms control the ordering and presentation of posts so that users see what is most relevant to them. And this relevance is defined by your network of friends, your Google searches, the likes that you had clicked on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, and your social media interactions. Posts and ads are presented based on what Facebook sees as relevant to you, the user. So you may assume that you are um, aware of what is the worldview when actually what you see on your social media accounts are just a reflection of what you yourself think, like, um, or what your friends uh, think or like, and thereby creating what we call an echo chamber, where we see one perspective of the world and not its totality. According to Dr. Patricia Greenfield of the UCLA Psychology Department, as technology has played a bigger role in our lives, our skills in critical thinking and analysis have declined, while our visual skills have improved. Unfortunately, this is a reflection also of how we make political decisions. We immediately like something based on a headline or uh, the visual of the article, rather than read through the article thoroughly. Many times I have seen people like an article, um, that appears to be in favor of their uh, the candidate that they like, when actually, if you read through the article, it says the opposite. But the visuals of that article were um, sort of uh, deceptive and therefore not easily um, detected. Another problem is that if you are using free Wi-Fi, Many times it does not include the pictures and therefore one can be misled by text headlines, not realizing that it could be a satire um, or it could be from an unreliable source. One thing that is happening on Facebook is that the political discussions are becoming more one-sided. One thing it is showing is that the valley of open-mindedness in which people are willing to consider the opposite views are definitely narrowing, where people expect to hear only what they like to hear. 
This reflects on how online polls are carried out. Why online polls are not accurate. First, they create filter bubbles. As we said, your algorithm prioritizes what you see and therefore it might create a filter blocking out opposite views and even uh, surveys or polls that are favoring a candidate that you are not in favor of. Um, it creates an algorithm bias wherein a poll attracts the same type of viewer, meaning um, if, for example, the initial, those who were first in answering the polls create sort of a demand or what happens is their network starts to dominate those polls and those outside their network may not even see those polls in their own Facebook feeds. And therefore, you have a very one-sided um, polling result. Then, of course, there is the older voter blind spot, assuming that the older voter, those um, usually over 60, are not very comfortable with online polls. And therefore, this um, untechy audience may not really, their, their ideas and their votes are not reflected in these polls. On the, on the other side or the other extreme, it might also create a younger voter blind spot. Those younger of the younger generation who have given up on Facebook and are more on Instagram and Snapchat chat and other newer applications. What we have to watch out for during this election period is a very, very rampant efforts of disinformation. If we look at the information disorder that is happening, we find that there are three levels. Misinformation, those that are unintended mistakes, maybe by um, legacy or mainstream media, um, misquotes, or perhaps um, some their source had misled them to report something. So there was no intent to deceive, um, but the result is, mis is wrong information. This information, on the other hand, is the malicious intent to deceive the audience. So it could be completely fabricated information or information that is misleading or deliberately um, making you conclude something else other than what it is saying or double speak. There are many types of disinformation, which is a topic for another talk. The third is malinformation. This is information that could be true or false, but delivered with malicious intent, intent intended usually to um, destroy the reputation of someone or an institution. This is an example of this information where um, you could see that a story is made with a false uh, photograph a photograph that has been lifted from an article that is totally um, not relevant or not even connected to the story being posted. So this is a very common type of disinformation where um, photos on the internet are taken out of context and put in articles that have nothing to do with them um, and given a new text, um, and made to appear as something new. So it could also be it's the same people involved, but it's a photo, let's say, that was taken in 2015, but it's being presented as something that happened yesterday. What we have to worry about is new technology that can create deep fakes. This is a video of a person in which their face or body has been digitally altered so that they appear to be someone else, typically used maliciously or to spread false information. This type of um, application was actually is actually used in Hollywood to create uh, characters 
um, especially for example, if an actor had died in the middle of, um, I mean, died of natural causes in the middle of shooting and they still have a little segment to go, they, this technology is used so that they could finish um, a film, the film production. Unfortunately, it has gone um, into other uses that are not um, il- that are not licit and are meant to harm audiences. Let's take a look at this video clip. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. Jordan Peele created this fake video of President Obama to demonstrate how easy it is to put words in someone else's mouth. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. Not everyone bought it, but the technology behind such frauds is rapidly improving, even as worries increase about their potential for harm. During these elections, we have to have a fact-checking state of mind. Not to believe everything that you read, always try to verify the source. Who is the source or what is the source? Determine which is the credible versus the unknown. What is the reputation of the publication? What is the reputation of the person? But even then, this is not a foolproof guarantee that the information is correct because the person sharing it, for example, a relative of yours, could have just picked it up from somewhere without verifying. Um, So we still have to double check. The best way to check is if it's a corroborated fact, meaning it's not just found in one source, but several credible sources. So when it appears in more than one media outlet, then uh, there's a good chance that that is exactly what had occurred, rather than it comes out only in one, let's say, blog. There's no way to verify if that is a true or false statement. There are telltale signs, for example, the URL or the website address, which tells you whether the source is credible or not, what is the, you know, um, why believe in a scientific, um, let's say, or, or a poll that claims to be scientific when it is shared by only a blog spot called, let's say, um, shopgirl.com, right? So, so we have to be very careful about where our information is coming from, um, especially if it's just a meme or a photo, um, which can easily be manipulated. Then even if it's a journal article, like an academic journal, not all academic journals are equal. You have to determine whether that academic journal has a good reputation. So, like I said, you have to be beware, to be very wary of memes. As this one says, people are still sharing fake news and fake competitions disregarding any use of logic or critical thinking. We have to be very careful because many times, uh, especially in the Philippines, this is the source of this information. When a person is misquoted, a, her picture is placed. Um, in a meme, and she is made to say, or he is made to say something that he or she has never said. The best solution and the most shortest way to determine whether a something is factual or not is to go to fact checkers. There are many credible, hardworking fact checkers um, all over the world, and um, the best way to check that is to see if they are recognized by the International Fact-Checking Network, which is based in the Pointer Institute in the U.S., that verifies or audits fact-checkers to see if they are doing um, honest, credible, trustworthy fact-checks. A shortcut to get to them is to Google it, but Google it using the Google Fact-Check tools, which can be um, access through toolbox.google.com slash factcheck slash explorer. If you put your question in the search box of the Google Factcheck Explorer, then it will um, provide you 
all the sources of information that had fact-checked that particular issue um, or question. For Philippine elections, there's the one-stop shop of check.ph, which in 2022 has been rebooted and relaunched in January 24 with 22 partners and growing. So this is an, um, an initiative by the UP Journalism Department with the support of the UP system and um, Google News Initiative. Um, so the idea here is that, um, you know, so that there's no duplication of work the fact checkers will work together to determine or to increase the number of fact checks that they can do in a day. As you know, it takes it might take five minutes to write a false a false information or a false article, but it takes at least half a day to check or verify um, the information given there to make sure that um, it is properly fact checked. So um, do. Do, do like it on Facebook or join its Twitter feed or its Viber group to be updated with um, election data fact checks. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button for more media literacy content.